So we are going to talk about the harmonic addition theorem, which says a sine of x plus b cosine of x can always be written as c cosine of x plus alpha for some c in alpha. In order to see why this is true, we notice cosine x plus alpha can be expanded out as cosine x cosine alpha minus sine x sine alpha. So what this equation means is we have a sine x plus b cosine x equals, and then we have c cosine alpha cosine x, just switching these two around, minus c sine alpha sine x. And if we want these two things to be equal all of the time, we know that the coefficients near each trig expression have to be the same. So we know that b is going to have to be the same as c cosine alpha, so that these cosine x's always have the same coefficient. So we have b equals c cosine alpha, and then for the sines, we know a equals negative c sine alpha. Now, what we want to do is start out by solving for c. And what we notice is if we square each of these equations, on the top one, we get b squared equals c squared cosine squared alpha. And on the bottom one, a squared, negative squared is a positive, we get c squared sine squared alpha. And what happens if we add these two equations together? We get a squared plus b squared equals, and then c squared, we get cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, which is just one. So in fact, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is going to be true. So we can use that to solve for c. In order to solve for alpha, we're going to look at both of these equations separately. For the first one, let's solve for cosine alpha. We get that cosine alpha, if we divide by c, is equal to b over c. And on the second one, if we solve for sine alpha, we get that it's negative a over c. Now some people like to divide these two equations and get a formula for tangent alpha, but I think using this is easier because it helps us figure out what quadrant we're in. We can use one of these to solve for the specific angle and then use the other one to check what quadrant we're in. So for example, say we want to look at just sine x plus cosine x. And we know in this case a is 1 and b is 1. So c is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just square root of 2. And then we can look at these two. We know cosine alpha is going to equal 1 over root 2. And we know that sine alpha is going to be negative 1 over root 2, because we have our negative a here. And what we can see from this is that we're going to have a positive x value and a negative y value. So we're going to be in quadrant 4 in this case. We're going to be right over here in this quadrant. So with these two values, we can figure out that our alpha in this case, the inverse cosine of 1 over root 2, that's going to be pi over 4. But we need it to be in the fourth quadrant, so we're actually going to get 7 pi over 4. Or you could also use negative pi over 4, same result. Which means that we know sine x plus cosine x is equal to square root 2 cosine x plus 7 pi over 4. And just like that, we can take a sine x plus b cosine x, use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and these two trig expressions over here to get it into the form c cosine x plus alpha.